Tony Siebel, let's hear it. Thank you. Um, the autonomous car, you may have heard about the self-driving car um, that has come out of uh, Google and Nissan and other companies. Um, recently, the CEO of Nissan announced that they will go to market with a self-driving car, fully self-driving car by 2018. That's four years from now. And a lot of people are shocked that how did this happen, right? And what is going to be the result of all these self-driving cars? But, you know, the truth is that we already have semi-autonomous, we also call them autonomous vehicles, uh, in the market. Essentially, all high-end cars today, from Audi and BMW and Mercedes and so on, um, have self-driving self capabilities, nearly all of them. And in fact, they have been migrating to the medium and the low end. Um, so this is something that has been happening already. Parks that drive themselves, park that, uh, that, that I mean that park, self-park, or, or that maintain a certain distance between cars, or actually will break if, if you're not paying attention. Uh, the, I think the Class C, the Mercedes Class C, already is self-driving on the highways, already. Okay, so this is something that has been happening for a while. It's, it's not a binary uh, zero, non-zero. Um, the NHTSA, the, the, the National Highway Transportation Safety Agency, has a five-level matrix from zero to four, basically saying, okay, you're a level zero if you have a car that the human is the driver all the time, 100%. And you have a one, and you have a two, and you have a three. And basically, you have a four when you have a fully autonomous, fully self-driving car where, where you don't need steering wheels, you don't need a human, you don't need basically uh, a person, period, right? Um, and look at where we are. We already have cars in levels zero, one, two, and three uh, in the market at Stanford. We are in conversations with one of these companies um, to have a self-driving shuttle to go around the campus. Because those of you who have been there, you know how large Stanford is. You just can't walk from one place to another. We have shuttles today, but we're already in conversations. We may have a self-driving shuttle at Stanford on the Stanford campus next year. Okay, these things are happening, and they're happening as we speak. It's, it's not in the future, it's now. Now, let's talk about price, because you know, these things must be pricey, right? Um, and this is, this is what a Google car sees. It's pretty uh, fascinating to look at uh, how the, uh, the, the, this technology is called LiDAR, which is short for uh, laser and radar, LiDAR. And, when Google disclosed its prices uh, in 2012, LiDAR cost $70,000. Two years later, it was $10,000. I know a company, I know an entrepreneur in Silicon Valley who claims to be building one with the same functional capabilities for $1,000. So basically, the exponential decrease in costs so far, I've told you about the, the lithium ion batteries, uh, LiDAR, and so on and so forth. Think of the electric vehicle and the self-driving cars as computers on wheels, as tablets on wheels. They are progressing, they are getting better so fast that they're getting better at the speed of Moore's law, which is at the speed of the computers that you own. Um, so it's no uh, uh, surprise that, that companies like, like Tesla that, that have started to dominate this, this field came out of Silicon Valley. Um, and the, 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 they see themselves more like Apple, 
than GM or Ford. It takes a whole different set of technologies. You have to write software and hardware and, and computing and, and so on and so forth, and you have to keep revving um, pretty much products all the time. Um, so again, it's no surprise that the self-driving car, this one, came out of Google, a computer company. Um, so the, 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 the car companies that actually want to live through this disruption have to get into this right now, or otherwise, wait until I tell you something else. The other question is, will users be ready for this? Cisco Systems did a survey, and this is the result. Depending on the country, 95% of Brazilians say, I will use a self-driving car right now. Right now. It's not even in the market. China, India, US, 60% of the market is ready to get into a self-driving car. Another part of this survey said, would you put your kid in a self-driving car and send, send her off to, uh, to school? And the numbers were pretty similar. So people are pretty ready for this kind of um, car. Now, here's another disruption that is going to come out. Uh, and those of you who are in, in urban design and architecture and landscaping, um, we're really not good drivers. People ask me, can I trust a self-driving car? Well, test driving cars already are better drivers than you are period, sorry, they're better drivers than I am. Uh, Stanford is working on um, a self-driving car that learns from Formula One drivers. So we're beyond us. I mean, we're talking Formula One drivers to see their reaction and how they handle the car and, and so on and so forth. Um, and, and, and they're pretty uh, accurate in terms of the software that, that self-drives. All those highways that we complain about, and those of you who live in the LA metro area, who spend hours and hours every day in traffic, we actually don't use 95% of the highways. We don't. That's because we're not great drivers. We leave too much space. We don't accelerate when we have to. We're like eating and putting makeup on and talking to the kids. And some people text and drive. <laughs> Um, so, in fact, we're not really great drivers. Um, and technology helps a lot with this. If all cars had adaptive cruise control, which is one of the many autonomous vehicle uh, technologies, we would have 40% better use of highways. So, essentially, if all cars had ACC, that's almost like doubling the highway space out there. Um, so I was talking about ACC. If you have ACC plus in our vehicle communications, those two technologies alone boost highway capacity by 273%. So anyone who's talking now about increasing highway capacity, about building more highways, all of those highways are going to be empty, OK? All of them. Because when we have an all autonomous vehicle uh, 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 market, that in and of itself will increase highway capacity by 4x, by 4x. Now, here's another interesting fact. We pay a ton of money for our cars, I don't care what car you have, average is $31,000, to park them 96% of the time. What a waste. What a waste. 31 grand or whatever plus gasoline and this and that to park it 96% of the time. Okay? Free parking is very expensive. It's very expensive. Now, here's what's going to happen when we have self-driving cars. Now, you know companies like Uber and Lyft and so on that come pick you up. You, you basically uh, click on your smartphone. Someone comes up, pick you up, and boom, takes you to, to your destination. Imagine those kind of software 
uh, uh, infrastructures with self-driving cars. Basically, they can take you from anywhere to anywhere, anytime, anytime, right? You could go at a bar, you could go to school, you could go to work, drop you off, and then go off to pick up somebody else. So what's going to happen is that cars, instead of being parked 90% of the time, they're going to be driving 90% of the time. Essentially, we're not going to need cars. What we need from a car is mobility on demand at a fair price. And by the evidence, early evidence, looks like on a per mile basis, we're going to pay 10x less for this kind of service, car on demand, uh, so self-driving car plus on demand. So we're not going to need to own a car. This is called car as a service, or at least I call it that. And remember 15 years ago when we talked about software as a service, that everything would be on the cloud? Folks, folks would say, me? Use software as a service? I don't think so. And now, of course, most of the industry is as a service. Um, so, conclusion. If we have a car as a service society, we're not going to need 80% of the cars that we have now. So the industry, the car industry, is going to go from selling 100 million cars a year to selling 20 million cars a year. So the auto industry will be massively disrupted. So disruption number one, we're going to go all electric. This number, disruption number two, we're going to go all autonomous, and the industry is going to shrink. Okay? No need for 80% of parking spaces. Imagine that. I mean, the whole downtown can be parking space free. Imagine what we can do with all that space. Green parking. No, parks, right? Green parks, not parking. Imagine what we can do. More density, more wealth, more health. And that is going to happen. Helsinki in Finland is already planning for its downtown a car as a service and transportation as a service, not just car. Ferries, buses, bikes, everything as a service where you can call it from your uh, smartphone by 2025. That's only 11 years away. So they're betting that this thing is going to happen, and it's not really a bet. We already have most of the technologies. Um, so conclusions from the self-driving car. Um, one is that car as a service will change the concept of car ownership. We're not going to need to own cars. Maybe one or two people will, but as a society, we're not going to need to own cars. Two, the new market, the new car market will shrink by 80%. Period. It's going to shrink because we're going to need fewer cars, which means the car insurance industry is going to be obsolete or at least disrupted. Oil, again, is going to be disrupted. So even if you don't believe the electric vehicle thing, the car market is going to shrink by 80%. So oil is going to be hit twice with two waves of disruption. Um, and of course, the auto industry, the whole transportation industry will be disrupted. Um, and we're not going to need 80% of the highway space and the parking space out there. Almost a third of the LA metro area, according to some figures I've seen, is parking. <coughs> A third, we're going to get most of that back. Imagine what we're going to do with that. 80% of parking and highway space will be useless. Thank you.